Hello. Hi. We decided to talk about uh, Ukrainian book history and about Ukrainian history in general and about Ukrainian books in general. I would like to talk a bit about how book printing started in Ukraine, because unlike the parallel process in, in, in Russia, in Ukraine, it was a much freer uh, process and many more typographies sprung up at the same time. And I'd like to show a few of them. Some interesting parallels to the modern time, I guess. Yeah, it's a complicated, convoluted story. Uh, there's lots to say about uh, about it and lo uh, lots to see because many of the early books preserved in some numbers again all over europe all uh, all over the world but i'll give you a few names and if you're interested you can see uh, uh, more for yourself so uh, we have to f uh, start with uh, this fine gentleman uh, Ivan Fyodorov, who was probably from Moscow, though we don't know that, who studied in Poland, in Krakow, uh, and who, uh, who is one of the earliest printers in uh, Russia. There was probably one earlier Danish uh, printer here, but he's the first name, uh, uh, named one. Here is his uh, signature, which I fi uh, find amazing. Which everybody can read. Well, yes. And what it says is, Johannes Fedorovich Moscovus Typographus. I like this. <laughs> so he says everything uh, uh, we need to know about him, that he's from Moscow and that he's a printer. And I'm talking about him because, well, he is one of the earliest printers uh, in Russia. He's certainly the earliest printer in uh, Ukraine at least as far as, as we can tell. So his story goes like this. He studies in Krakow. He comes back to Moscow. He prints a few books there, uh, has some disagreement with uh, powers that be, as it usually happens, and flees uh, for his life to Poland. There, in uh, the city of Zabludov, he found a printing house of which architecturally nothing survives, but in terms of books, there are a few examples. And again, you, you can probably uh, see them if you really want to. This is not an original binding, but it's a lovely one. It, it looks very medi medieval in terms of uh, its symbols. So uh, Pelican, it's uh, in its pi uh, piety, a unicorn, what is probably a lion. And the printing itself is not that bad. I mean, uh, com uh, compared to the very earliest books printed in Russia, it's progress, although he still uses uh, the same uh, font, the same lead, like literally the same, the same letters. The overall uh, composition has advanced uh, quite a bit. And here, here's more. Oh, wait, that was an original binding, because I think we see a very similar uh, uh, co uh, coat of arms here. And it is a coat of arms of uh, the patron who paid for the printing of the book and for founding uh, the Blood of Printing House, which continued to exist after Fedorov left and uh, went back to modern-day uh, Ukraine, which he does a lot. He is, uh, unlike uh, his legacy in Moscow, which did not last. It lasted in terms of pupils, but not in terms of actual typographies. What he did in, uh, I mean, look at that. What he did uh, in, uh, in Poland and Ukraine did endure. Uh, the second place he, uh, he went from there is the city of Ostroch. Here is here is uh, the castle, and I'm not just showing you a beautiful image. This is the actual building where he printed his books. I mean, not a bad place, and <laughs> clearly he wanted some distance between him and outside And world. other people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can uh, understand. So, so we don't hear much about the city of Ostrov. 
I'm not even sure it's now a city and not a town, probably still a city, certainly historically. But it was the location of a very important principality at the time. And we are talking, what are we talking here, 1580s? or thereabouts, I think. And it was uh, the place uh, where the very first university or university-like organization was founded in modern day in Ukraine. And as part of that uh, drive, uh, typography was founded by a local duke. So he, yeah, he first tried to import uh, printers from uh, uh, from Poland, from Denmark, but nobody had heard of Ostrog and decided not to go. Ivan Fedorov really needed a place to work, and this was a great one. Now, from that run, we have quite a few, quite a few books. The best known of them is uh, the Ostrog Bible. I'm not sure it's the first uh, book printed in Ukraine, no, it's not. I'll show you the first a bit later. Wait. Uh, um, um, but may maybe it is. Anyway, uh, again, we are seeing that this is a Moscovite printer who trained in Poland and uh, war and now is now working in Ukraine. But save for the font, it's a European book. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the composition is, uh, is very Renaissance-inspired, probably lifted directly from uh, uh, Renaissance uh, engravings. Uh, the, the book itself is rather impressive in terms of its size. So it's not like a small, it's not a small thing, not at all. It's a full Bible, Tetra Evangelion, as, it, as you said, and more than that, a full Bible, both, I think both um, uh, uh, the Jewish books and the Christian ones. I'm not sure uh, about that, but it, it, it's, uh, it's a work of love. It took uh, two years to print it, at least. So it, it was, a, uh, it was a, bi a big project and a successful one because quite a number of them do survive. Survive, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I really like this image. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the creation of the Ostrog Bible, a very, very romantic image. I mean, look at uh, how clean the printer is. <laughs> look at how docile the woman, the only woman in the image who is in the background bringing them vodka is. Uh, the, the whole, the whole, the whole thing is hilarious to my mind. But uh, then, it, other than uh, uh, a historical details, it probably did look something like this. I don't think they had uh, bookshelves quite like that. But certainly, the uh, uh, the count was wearing something along the, uh, these lines. I did find a very sketchy drawing of him. Uh, the printing press certainly looked like that. Mm -hmm. The hands of the printers were probably as mus muscular. But... I, I think there is there is a, a similar reconstructed printing press somewhere in Belarus. So there were some enthusiasts who were working on a project to recreate one of the uh, I don't know if the oldest uh, 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 printing press in Belarus or one of the oldest. So yeah, you can probably. I'll show you the old the oldest press in Ukraine a bit later. Sure. So we certainly have nothing from the 16th century or early 17th. Well, it it would be a freak survivor. I don't know of. I'm not sure I know of uh, 16th century presses in Europe. I may be wrong. I know 17th century examples. Maybe there are some uh, some examples preserved from earlier. But anyway, here's another example, more relevant to the studying the university, the school part. I think the the only the only older uh, presses uh, uh, that I know of in in Europe are not printing presses, but are paper presses. Of, yeah. of, of, of those, I, I know some, some which, which are quite old, but uh, uh, not, definitely not printing presses. This is, uh, uh, whoa, Asbuka, uh, 
abecedarium abecedarium yeah abecedarium from even a bit uh, a bit earlier uh, than uh, the Ostrog Bible and it is it is also a, a labor of typographer's love i mean i really like how all these letters half of which i don't know how to pronounce by the way and this is cyrillic i mean those uh, at the bottom i have mostly no idea what they are this is yat this is omega but what these are these are probably use uh, you uh, the big use the little use these letters all disappeared uh 100 150 years later uh, and they were mostly used uh, in both uh, ukrainian and uh, russian texts to transliterate greek words like theta there should be a theta somewhere in here yeah here it is no no here it is it was only used for greek words so uh, anyway he, um, I mean, it, it's not that uh, different to modern day uh, uh, abecedariums. I mean, there's a letter, the, uh, there's a list of words starting with, uh, uh, with this letter, and you can even still read it. Like, Buki is the name of um, uh, the letter B, and Budi on Budish. So, uh, as, as school as school boys uh, ex exercise yeah okay i've seen a copy of it very very recently in moscow now the uh, now these are really rare unlike uh, the bibles everything that was used by students, used a lot yeah, yeah. kids most often is lost in history yeah yeah here's another example from the same printing house but after Fedorov left he wasn't one for staying for long. Uh, this is a list of saints. So Mutsa, uh, which is Mata, female Mata, Mucinitsa. Interestingly, some of uh, these books, and again, I'm not a philologist, but I am told this particular book, Apocrisis, is written in a form of proto-Ukrainian language. Apparently, you can rec uh, recognize some details of the language that are recalled in, in later. And here is uh, the most famous book uh, Ivan Fedorov printed in Ukraine. In his third um, residence there in Lviv, I think this is how it is pronounced in English. Uh, it's also Lviv in Ukrainian, Lvov in Russian. It's a great, uh, a great city in uh, Western Ukraine. Uh, with uh, some of the oldest uh, links to Poland and other uh, Western cities and uh, with an old university, great libraries and a great tradition of book printing. And the first printer there was, again, Ivan Fedorov, and he uh, printed this Apostle, which is a variant of a book he printed uh, in Moscow first. And you can find it uh, online. This is uh, an example from the National Library uh, of Ukraine and is uh, one of the greatest treasures. And also you can see his signature here. So we know it was him, unlike most of the books here uh, printed elsewhere that we have to recognize by the actual font he used. And uh, this particular book uh, includes, uh, it's towards uh, the end of his life, and he in uh, includes the story of how he, of how he find, uh, uh, founded printing in Moscow and in Poland and in Ukraine. And it's, uh, it's translated into English, and you can find uh, the whole story. It's quite a journey. It wasn't a peaceful time, shall we say. Thank you all for staying with us. See you next time on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, and uh, we, we will definitely talk more about the Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian books in the future. Thank you.